In today's video we'll be going over the operation and settings of the X35 monitor. In the first portion we'll look at settings and then after that we'll move on to the operational screen. In order to navigate the X35 monitor, uh, it's completely touch screen so there's a number of different ways you can do it. Sliding your hand over, touching different things, uh, there's hidden buttons at the bottom of this screen. It gets you into different things, power, uh, questions. The question will <clears throat> pop a bunch of question marks, letting you touch on those to indicate what each of those uh, tabs are for. There's also a camera for screenshot in this hidden tab, a home screen setting button, home screen, increasing your brightness on your screen, decreasing it, and also a auto uh, brightness <clears throat> mode. Okay, Getting to manage your home screens. Alright, so first of all we're going to look at our settings page. To get by to that we hit the wrench on the operating, operating screen, so we'll just touch the wrench. Down at the bottom we see five tabs, user, system, vehicle, implement, and product. Depending on which one of those you touch on, uh, you'll get a list of items above it. <clears throat> and again, each one you touch on may open up more tabs. There's arrows halfway up the screen, forward and reverse, will allow you just to move through those tabs one at a time, or you can touch on any of the tabs as you go. So the first one <clears throat> in the user region language, just setting your language. There's a time date to set your time and date. And then a units tab um, coming from the factory, it'll be set to metric. So if you want to change that, you'll have to go in there to change that. The light bar tab, again, that will be normally disabled unless you hap happen to be running Top Gun steering. Environment tab <clears throat> allows you to set some of the uh, settings on your X35, audio volume, button clicks, alarm audio. Your global home screen tab is there as well. A uh, couple buttons we do not use, system 150 and automatic steering again is only used if you're using the Topcon steering. Toolbar button size just <coughs> set the size of the button on your tabs on your screen. Map, again, just the settings for your guidance screen, how you want it to look. There are also an access level tab here. You can set various um, <clears throat> levels and passwords. Also gets into dealer only uh, levels as well. User controls, there's three different settings on the user controls, easy, standard, and expert. Really it's just getting rid of some of the clutter on your screen. You can go through, select anything that may, you may not be using and turn it to an X. <clears throat> you can see by previewing the easy, some of the tabs disappear whenever we do that. So just to make it a little bit simpler, remote support. Okay, that is what we use to get into uh, whenever we want to hook this monitor to another desktop uh, at a distance. System, <clears throat> features, the license tab will just show any of the uh, different things that have been registered. In this case we have the Extend, it's licensed, only one showing up on here right now. Console, Universal Terminal, if that's enabled, it'll give you a, a screen where you can view your uh, scale. Nice about shortcut button we do not use. File Server is something that we use for the Apollo system in order to transfer data, so that's generally left enabled. Cameras for the X35 and 9000 series tanks are being used, so if you have a 9000 that would be enabled. Per point data in logging is a function that is used for collecting the data that you're saving as you um, go about your jobs. If you have that turned on, you're going to be storing a lot more data than if you have it disabled. 
there are some companies that use that, so check with your company to see if that's required to be on or off. The DC support we do not use, and the weather station is not used. Extend, if you are wanting to use uh, the Extend app on a phone or tablet, you must turn it on here. And again, you're going to have to download that app onto your phone or tablet in order to make that useful. Again, instructions for in detail for all of these different tabs are on our website. So, if you need, or the operator's manual, if you require more information, refer to them. The guidance tab. So, guidance is always running in the background, so it's enabled. Your reverse control. Uh, this is a situation we ran into last year where sometimes the machine would see seem like it was being pushed down the field by the tractor instead of pulled. Um, it was had to do with the way the GPS was being loaded into the tractor and monitor and by enabling this, if we go back to our other running screen, we'll see here this is our reverse detection. So if you come into that situation and your implement is being pushed rather than pulled, you can hit your reverse control and turn it around the correct way. Control traffic is unlicensed. Uh, the job helper mode, there's a couple different things here to help you whenever you are uh, in the field. There's a quick start and also a job assist. Uh, and again, detailed instructions are on those. I will just touch on quick start slightly because we will get a tab with it. So if we select quick start, you'll notice there is a quick start tab which we will come to shortly. The AB lines and everything else on this page now are just to do with uh, Topcon steering. So again, you can turn all of those off. It won't let you, it'll make you leave one of them on, so one will have to be enabled. If you have them turned on, it's just going to put unnecessary tabs on your guidance screen. The implement tab turns on some of your implement features, your auto section control, your variable rate control are on here. Also turns on area counters. <clears throat> There's a reset for area counters. Um, new for spring 2020, the eye to eye or coverage sharing between two or more machines. If you are using that, it will have to be enabled in the monitor here. There's also a tab if you want to lock this setup menu so nothing can be changed in here while the master switch is on. Um, that can be enabled so nobody can be in here and changing things as you're seating. And then also if you have way scales, those would have to be enabled to be able to view those on screen. Extend app, again, uh, new for 2020. It allows you to connect two devices. Uh, if a second one comes on, it's going to uh, take the place of the first one. Quick start. So back in our guidance screen with the quick start option, here's what we can set it to do. We can have it uh, export our job, uh, change field, record boundary. Again, you're going to go in and select the ones you want. And then when we get to our guidance screen, we'll show you that quick start tab and what it's able to do. GPS, all of this is going to be set up at the dealer, um, so I'm not really going to cover it. Serial ports, again, is also a connection for your GPS. The alarms, some general alarms as well as seizure alarms. Okay, these are the settings for them, the on-off state, as well as some of them do have thresholds or different settings you can adjust. Flag points, there's a number of different presets here. You can change them to different names if you would like to coincide with what you have to mark. Uh, cameras, <clears throat> so again, there is, if you have the camera in 9000, Again, there is all the settings here for your camera. 
how you get them set up, camera one and two, uh, your adjust mirrored or uh, not mirrored, and then there's just some <coughs> other settings you can have it uh, loop or different things. The Isobus tab is all preset, we don't have to worry about it. Utilities, under this one there's provision USB for upgrade. Uh, that has to do with putting software on the monitor. The software when on the stick is locked, so it has to be unlocked. This is where you would do that. USB Wi-Fi, so for setting up your hotspot to use the extend function, this here is what you would have to come in and select. If you're using um, <clears throat> remote support, you're going to use client instead of the hotspot on this tab. Vehicle is for picking your vehicle. So if you don't have a vehicle picked, you'd have to go into new, select it out of the list. One note, just make sure that your geometry is matching the tractor that you have picked. And you can change these simply by touching on them and entering the correct number. Our implement tab, okay, select. Again, for a new one, you have to go through either custom or factory. And again, there's guidance online how to set those up. Yours is going to be set up from the dealer and ready to go for use. The ECU tab, so there's different tabs here. Uh, the setup. Under these, it'll give you the which tank is being controlled by which CM40 and which drive it is plugged into. It'll also show the firmware version. So down through all of the different options you may have. Under the management tab, again, this allows us if an ECU had to be changed or something to be able to go in and do that. And an upgrade. Yeah, allows for upgrading ECUs through the monitor. The geometry of the drill, under the drill there is a number of different tabs, so the first one is for all of them, settings for all. The individual tab, so it will give you at the end of the name what each one is for, so full width there will be a tab for your seed and we notice the depth H of the machine is going to change on on these tabs as we go through them the fertilizer tab or the banders is a 10 inch depth and then liquid in this case has liquid so you have to enter the width of that as well under section control sections so with a factory profile you're going to get this auto populating the number of sections the widths of each section uh, if you are adding in this case uh, has a liquid boom you would have to enter the number of sections and the width of each of those into the monitor as it doesn't know what those would be. The timing, okay so there's timings for each one of these booms and we do have the quick reference cards available for that. Uh, we have this first one, boom two is the seed, boom three would be your fertilizer and again boom four if you have liquid or NH3 a, a third boom will show up and again as a starting point, go to your quick reference card, enter those. <clears throat> okay, and again, all the tanks have each one of those. They have to be set up. Tank grouping. So this here, you can adjust the way you have your tank set up. So if you change your tank, you'll have to come in here, realign this using the tab so that it will uh, make everything the right size for you whenever you get to it. If you try leaving this tab, it'll ask you if you want to change it, and I'll say no. The drive setup is a factory setting mostly, except the only thing that needs to be changed on 
your machine. If you have a high output auger, you know, make sure that each one of these matches what is physically in your tank for your metering auger. Control setup is all factory set. We don't have to worry about that. We're using the settings for tangles in prior to starting to seed. Section switch is just, uh, it will put a, uh, if you enable this first tab, it's going to put a section switch onto the operating screen on the guidance page. Cedar tab, so granular up one quick, quick second to our sections. Timing, okay, these timings here are referring to the timing that it takes the product to go from the section gate to the ground, all right? So from the section gate to the ground, and then we're gonna go back to our cedar granular tank, and as we open these up, we'll also notice that there's section timings in here, on time to section location, off time to section location, and we also, on the quick reference card that comes with your monitor, there will be timing, starting times for each size of tank there as well. Okay, also on this we'll give you your name of the tank, capacity, status, whether it's enabled or not. Section control, whether it's dropping your product into the seed run or the fertilizer run. And this is something that you will have to change if you change what airstream you're delivering product from that tank into. The tab above the numbers for all the tanks, uh, how you want to name your tank is in this one. You use product as name. Preload time, so this here gives us a number of seconds that our meters will run without any ground speed. And then also ignore ground speed while preload is active. You can have that enabled or disabled and then a minimum operating fan speed. So this is just generally to make sure the fans are running without before the meters turn on. If you have liquid you'll have a tab for it as well where you'll have all the settings to do for the for it. Your fan again if you wanted to turn off fan 2, for instance, you can disable it so you don't get your alarms. Pump 1 we don't use. Drill control, so lift master. So in order to <clears throat> use your uh, lift master, you have to turn it on. You will need to put a lower time in there. If you are also have Packmaster, you will have to enable it. And then there is a page to set up on it as well. Uh, your control is enabled. You would be able to put in a preset and increment tabs, pack forest control type if you are going to use it you're going to be turning that to pack force using a pack force as a second display value allows you to see both your hydraulic pressure and packing force map value at hydraulic pressure will allow you to uh, see the different uh, pressures your hydraulics are at over the field so Picking the drive is just the drive that it's plugged into on the Packmaster ECU. The calibration, min and max load are the settings for 500 and 1500 PSI. And your min and max cal value are numbers it gets from doing that calibration as well. These numbers should be over 100 apart, so your minimum to your max should be at least 100. If it's less than that, there's probably an issue with either the load cell or some wiring or something that's not, not allowing that signal to transmit properly. 
You also have to pick the drill model here, whatever you have it hooked to, and the type of opener. Control settings. So these are the control settings. Uh, the maximum PWM has been reduced from previous uh, years down to 40% to stop overpacking coming out of the headland. Accessories. Uh, just really going to look at the blocked head in here. We'll enable that. If you have, uh, have Topcon blockage, you've ordered it from the factory, you'll have to enable it here. If you are wishing to turn off the fertilizer runs, do so here. Just set to seed only, or fertilizer only, or seed and fertilizer. Don't change anything else on this page. It'll auto-populate everything, and it's all fine, other than just changing your enabled and disabled. And also on the accessories tab we have the brake controller tab so again for surge brakes uh, this would need to be enabled from your dealer if he is PDI'd it uh, there is a reverse switch to be able to back up they'll put a reverse switch on your screen there's also the alerts for uh, how much pressure is on there to give you an alarm if it's retaining pressure in the system. Your enabled head systems. Way scales, if you had way scales you'll get a tab showing the ECUs. This is where they get detected. This will show how they're set up, the setup numbers and the calibration, the assignment, and also your uh, pressure compensation. Okay, GPS source, uh, generally we like to see that set to GPS as it's the most accurate. Uh, fallback type, you can have a wheel sensor or manual as a backup. Unfortunately, if you do lose GPS, your sectional control is gone um, and your variable rate is gone. New this year, there is a maximum operating speed that you can set to whatever you want so that your master switch will not turn on if you're traveling at speed faster than that, just to you know, keep from harming anything. Audio alarms, so there's different alarms here you can turn on for your master switch, your tank switch, your drill lift lower, and uh, sections on and off. Operator inputs, so there's how you want your uh, master switch set up, so in this case it's keypad and virtual, and there's keypad tab here. So under the keypad, there's both the tractor and the tank. So there is a serial number associated with each one of them. You have to pick the one that is in the cab to go with it and the one that's on the tank to go with that one. Your buttons A, B, C, you can select from your list to put whatever controls you want onto each one of these plus whatever buttons are not used for tanks in this case seven and eight can also be assigned to different functions as well okay and then on <clears throat> the tank one they're pretty much set up your you can have your on off for calibration on A, C is prime or reset. So if you're in operating mode, it'll prime, so it'll run the tank for whatever period of time you've set it to run. And in calibrate, it will reset your monitor. Also, the B button you can assign to be lift lower or a tank fill for doing from back at the tank as well.
speed and position we do not use that tab and then the product tab uh, I'll just touch on the granular one there's a number of products preset in here if you go into the new product you can do custom products setting up your own or you can pick from a list that is already in here so we have the list you can just add it okay it's already in my list of course I'll just give it a different number okay so it'll bring it in to here you can enter the values the rates you want to put it on at an increment Okay, then it will become part of your list of products. So suggest making that list prior to seeding so they're all in there. Um, so that whenever you're in the field, you can do it. So this is the end of the settings page. We will go back to the operating screen, screen to do that. We use that running man. From there, we will turn to our operating screen.